Jack Crusher is an archetypal Han Solo type invention. This week's episode tries to lead you down one path while insinuating that Jack may indeed be a con man before pulling back from that. He isn't a saint by any stretch of the imagination through training weapons for medicines and the like, and he does attempt to do the greater good overall. He does mastermind criminal activities and does what the Federation can't and is seen as a bit of a rogue. The conversation in the brig is an interesting one. Picard, knowing Beverly, in inverted commas, is immediately challenged by Jack, stating that people change, and that's how Beverly is seen in his eyes while um, Picard hasn't been in his life. It kind of ends with Jack's arc in this episode, which showcases his bravery uh, and unselfishness when it comes to his mother. He is willing to hand himself in to save his mother and in turn the Titan. His motivations are clear and it provides the audience with an understanding of who that character is. The underlying threat is further developed by bringing in some of the worlds that we are aware of in both Legacy Trek and in Star Trek Picard. Jack states that the Fenris Rangers, the Klingons and Starfleet officers have all been on this trail for months. This is a much wider net that's being cast. Where this leads, I'm sure that we will find out. Picard throughout this episode has some challenges of his own. He shows some guile in the form of the transporter inhibitors earlier in the episode, and that was to confirm that Jack is the target, which enables the Elias to be placed in a stalemate long enough for the Titan to arrive. R Riker, in the meanwhile, is convinced that Jack is the son of Jean-Luc Picard and questions Picard a few times to hammer home what this story is about and enable us to have that hero scene towards the end with Picard issuing new orders. On the Titan, Shaw dismisses Seven for insubordination. Seven wants to save the day, and implicitly states to Shaw that he will be held responsible for the death of our heroes in Riker and Picard. Shaw rightly also showcases that the Titan is an exploratory vessel, which, as we found out, is no match for the Shrike and his weaponry. Vadek's scenes are reminiscent of General Chang in Star Trek VI. Her motives are not yet clear, and I'm not entirely sold on her as a character, so she's out well informed and educated on the Titan and her crew. There's also a reference to an unknown technology that the Shrike is carrying as the Titan scans the ship which will soon come into play, no doubt. If you're still around and like what you see, drop me a like and subscribe. In the other story, we see the return of Rafi's conspiracy-led investigations and a nice understanding of her troubles with her family. In this, she's given a choice not too dissimilar of that of Picard, her work or her family, leading her to Sneed and to her natural inclination of addiction that was reiterated in last episode and comes to the fore here. To good effect, I thought that that worked really well, that we do feel that Rafi is in a real-world situation there. Rafi feels much better here than last week's episode, although I'm not still overly convinced of the, the situation that she is completely in at the moment, and hopefully that will get better. The reveal of Worf is quite easy signposted, but what an entrance. That now leads me to say farewell and disengage.